Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a creative photography idea that you can do at home. And what's best about it is that you can get your astrophotography pictures involved also. If you're interested and you'd like to follow along, then here's what you're going to need. First of all, at number one, you're going to need a small space in which you can set up this photograph. It's going to be kind of a staged scene and you just need a little bit of room for it. In this case, just the kitchen cutting board is going to be more than good enough for my purposes. Secondly, you're going to need a tablet or a laptop computer that you can place on this surface behind what's going to be your subject. It's going to act as a backlight and also a background and you'll see more about that in a moment. Thirdly, you're going to need a camera and a tripod. Ideally a DSLR would work great but I'm sure you could do this also with a camera phone mounted on a tripod. The capabilities of those these days are just fantastic. And last but not least, coming in at number four is going to be a subject that you can photograph. Now, this can be just about anything. It just needs to be something interesting. Ideally, something like these glass ornaments here next to me, this little uh, solar system model and this little glass angel, as that's going to allow the backlit light from your tablet or laptop or whatever to pass through it and refract through that glass. And it's going to give a really interesting effect. But I've done lots of interesting pictures like this, just using water droplet photography, on feathers, on pieces of grass, you name it, you've just got to get creative with this kind of thing. All right, so I've got everything I need to get started and I'm just going to begin now setting the scene. So I've got my tablet on and displaying a picture from Google Photos, my drive, it's my recent NGC7331 image. Um, feel free to pinch and zoom and such as much as you like with your own images, they don't have to be particularly perfect to make this effect look very good. They're going to be out of focus anyway. So then you're going to want to place in front of your background your foreground object. So ideally if it's something like this glass you're going to want to give it a little bit of a clean first as smudges, fingerprints, things like that they're all going to show up really strongly and you don't want that in your pictures when you're trying to make them look as pretty as possible. And finally you're going to want obviously the camera set to just about the right height so it's going to look through your subject to the background and we'll just lock that off there. Now this is roughly set up, I'm gonna go ahead now and start taking some test shots and further refine this. Okay, so now we're just gonna get things very roughly aligned. I'm gonna record this as I do it through the uh, DSLR screen. So if you can see, I'm trying to get the globe centered up and the camera just high enough that I can peek over the top of this cutting board and kind of look through it. I want to increase the zoom or get the camera closer if you don't have a zoom lens uh, to the point where basically the tablet no longer shows borders on the screen and now I want to go ahead and start getting in focus I'm not going to trust automatic too much for this purpose so I'll just uh, try and manually get this about right so as you can see we're getting close I uh, think I could do it maybe moving the image on screen of so slightly so we're looking cleanly through it yeah that's somewhat more like it and also the rotation of this little planetarium system here uh, if I just give that a little bit of tilt that could look interesting as it's going to show more of those names in this particular subject case so let's go ahead now and turn the lights off and start taking some test shots Okay, so now the light's off, we can see things just a little bit better and get more of an idea of what we're going to be looking at. Now, bear in mind on my screen here in particular, I'm looking through a video live view. So the actual photograph settings that I use are going to be a little bit different to this. But we'll talk about those in a moment. Now, I'm just going to finish trying to get this centered up. I'm physically moving the tablet right now, I'm trying to get this lined up so we've got an interesting part of those... Uh, dusty rifts going through uh, the center of this globe over here if you can see that making it look a little bit like Jupiter's gas bands um, I say gas bands the uh, the storms All right so okay I want Jupiter to be showing right there so let's rotate a little more that's quite an interesting frame and I'd say already at that so I'm going to go ahead now and move to photograph mode and take a quick snap and I'll put that on screen for you. Okay, so this is a half of a second exposure at f5 ISO 200 and the camera's set to be about 70mm focal length on the uh, 
on the lens. Now I think looking at this, I could do with dropping down the, uh, the camera's height ever so slightly. So I'm looking more centrally through the globe towards the background and we'll try again. All right, so for this shot, I've gone from a half of a second at F5 ISO 200 to one second at F8 ISO 200, and I've also crept up the zoom a little bit, maybe towards about 75 millimeters or so, just to get that frame in ever so slightly tighter. All right, I think we're getting close towards a, a nice picture now. I think there's one more final kind of tweak that needs to be made. This background, uh, sorry this little holder is ever so slightly twisted and if I just try and line that up with my hands now and make it central that looks quite a little bit better to me now so I'm going to go ahead and refocus because I've probably just moved the whole globe a little bit I'll make sure of that and go ahead and try another test shot all right I'm pretty happy with how things came out on that one I'm going to now change the background and we'll just see what it does to this photograph it should change the dynamic of it quite a lot all right, I've opted now to try a picture of the Sol Nebula that I've taken, and I think the Whirling Dervish section of it is probably going to look quite nice. There's a good bit of contrast there in the image. If I just zoom in and place that around until I start getting some interesting refractions happening through uh, this glass ball. And I think that little dark rift there is an interesting segment while still leaving some... Oop, interest in the background. Definitely don't do that as I've just had a minor heart attack. All right, so a test shot at those previous settings is still looking pretty darn good, but I think on this one, I kind of want to rotate this globe a little bit and maybe show a few more of those planet names if I can. It's kind of challenging to get all these aligned, but I think we're about there. Now we're looking straight across the plane of the solar system. That gives quite an interesting dynamic to the image again. So I'm gonna go ahead and take another shot now. Okay, I quite like that framing, uh, looking across the solar system plane there. So I've just changed targets now. This is the ghost of Cassiopeia, IC63. I I think that looks like reasonably nice framing with the ghost just kind of appearing off the side there. Um, I may need to expose a bit longer on this one as it's quite a dim image. So we'll go check that out now and see what a test shot looks like. All right, so that was a two and a half second exposure, F7.1, ISO 200, and that same 75 millimeters or so of focal length. And I think that's came out immediately really good so i'm happy with that and i'll probably just move on to maybe one more image of this and then we'll try the other subject all right so i thought this one could turn out potentially quite cool it's it's a fairly dark target it's the ring nebula of course but i've noticed here if i just zoom in and kind of carefully move it i can get it to appear almost as an eye sort of thing right in the middle of the globe there that now that's quite an interesting effect I think I'm going to try on there with the sun perfectly central and then I may try rotating so we're looking down straight through the plane of the solar system and uh, we'll just see how that turns out with some test shots.
Okay, so after playing with the framing a little bit there, I didn't actually really like that top-down view too much. Uh, I instead preferred this kind of tilted view, looking down at an angle. I think that's worked out really well for this, and I could obviously go on and on and on and go through my little portfolio of pictures, but I'm sure you get the idea by now. I'm just going to move ahead and try that other little target, the little glass angel, and see how that comes out for a moment. All right, so just looking at it with this kind of preliminary framing right now, it looks like the subject is a little bit short. So I'm just going to temporarily try and stand it on the uh, lens caps for my camera to get it up a little bit. That's maybe too much, so I'll try just one of them. All right, I think that's perfect. So I need to get a uh, rotation to a point where I'm happy with it. I think kind of straight perfectly on like that, symmetrical. Probably looks quite nice. Uh, and I'll maybe get some more shots later with uh, kind of that slightly turned praying look almost. Um, in fact, no, I'm going to go for that right away. I'm sure you've got the idea by now of what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and get focused, make sure I'm happy with the position of this uh, background shot of M31 and try and take some shots. All right, so here's a preliminary shot at 1.6 seconds, F7.1, ISO 200. I'm trying to leave those settings alone, basically. And I think it's come up with a really nice, moody look to the picture. I am going to try now just uh, increasing that exposure slightly to try and make it kind of sparkle a little bit more uh, without hopefully overblowing the galaxy too much. So we'll try now at two and a half seconds. All the other settings are exactly the same. It would be a good idea for me to use a shutter release on this, but honestly, I'm uh, I'm just doing this to try and try and show you the uh, concept of it, basically. I think that's came out with a better picture, the slightly longer exposure. Space still looks quite kind of black, inky black, but the body of the subject is definitely sparkling more and picking up more of that light. So that's looking really cool right now. Okay, so I've settled on a picture of M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, for my final picture for this demonstration. I think I kind of like the idea of the wings, those extensions of that nebula, it's sort of adding to the effect of that angelic look to the, to the picture. I think it could work. I'm just going to go ahead and do a little bit of lining up and see if we can't make it look quite cool. Well, I think that's about it for this video now. I'd like to say thank you very much indeed for watching. If you've enjoyed this, as you can tell, it's probably been a bit of an experiment, then do let me know. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, maybe I can make more things like this, perhaps some macro photography videos, nature photography. I don't know, but all these things would be making it so much easier for me to make videos sometimes because uh, as we all know what the weather's like, you cannot rely on it whatsoever. So uh, there's probably going to be periods of weeks where there's no clear skies and at least this would give me something to do and some content to share if you enjoy it. So with that said, I think that's about everything. So thank you again for watching. A huge thank you to all my YouTube channel members. And that's about it. So see you later.